Is this the same as providing tender, loving care? No, and this is something that I'm going to take a little more time to answer for you because it is really so important. Affirming love is not something that a person does to another person, but it's a state of being in the therapist, okay? The therapist being aware of and moved by the unique goodness and worth of the client that she's faced with. It implies that the therapist is capable of mature, unselfish love, which, as you know, the essence of love is that it's creative. Love creates, you know, the Father and the Son creates, you know, Holy Spirit. It, it com comes from, from that relationship. So the therapist is capable of mature, unselfish love, naturally has creative effects, so that the therapist is able to restore the conditions which make it possible for the emotional life of the client to resume the natural growth, especially, of course, kept in the proper channels, and that's where the therapist needs to guide things appropriately. So there are many key components of the affirming love therapy, and that's what I want to just review because it's rare that you'll get these delineated in such a clear way. I think healing the unaffirmed is the place to look if you want to review in your own mind which are the components of the therapy that are important. And we do follow this very closely at Hope Family Resources. The first would be helping the client gain insight into this condition of the deprivation neurosis. And we usually do this through counseling sessions as well as appropriate books or tapes. The second would be the component of emotional affirmation, which is especially important in girls. Treating the client in a safe, tender, motherly fashion, characterized by dedication, caring, interested attention, affection, cordiality, patience, sympathy, warmth. You hear these very maternal kind of qualities. When the client and therapist are both women, the therapist may include tactile sensory contact as long as it's within the proper boundaries. So you'd have a female therapist with a female client. And she may always warmly clasp the hands of the, of the client maybe at the end of the session or at a certain point she may touch the shoulder of the, of the client or squeeze the hand. And That's something that's very important. But that's emotional affirmation, including where, where appropriate, the tactile contact. Then there's a necessity of intellectual affirmation. This is more important in boys. We just talked about emotional being more important in girls. Intellectual affirmation is more important in boys. So the therapist comes to know the client through and through, even the worst qualities of the client, at the same time still retaining affection for the client, understanding him, approving his actions where it's possible to approve of his actions, eliminating all the reasons why a client considers himself to be bad. And this approach of intellectual affirmation does not include probing or forcing self-disclosure. The fourth component is spiritual affirmation. And this might include the laying on of hands or praying over a client where indicated. And of course, spiritual affirmation can involve as well infusion from the therapist to the client of hope, faith, all those wonderful, virtuous qualities, very important for affirmation. The fifth component would be what we call reverse family therapy. And we're talking here not about seeing the other family members in the room, but actually the client living with a healthy family. In fact, one of these we often do at HFR is see if we can bring the client to interact with the staff of Hope Family Resources, so such as, for example, at a fundraising event, a special healing service, or in some cases even come to work at Hope Family Resources so that he can be surrounded by a healthy role model of a family. We also have a sixth component, play or recreation therapy. This is important in which we can encourage the childish gratifications that the person lacked growing up. So in men, for example, we allow them to participate in sports for physical affirmation, affirmation of their physical muscular qualities, as well as technical hobbies, handicrafts, electric trains, photography, those kind of things. And in women, we allow them to play with dolls, do simple coloring books and fairy tale coloring books, finger paint, things like that. And the seventh component of affirmation therapy would be group therapy. 
you can have a group for mutual affirmation. So these would be the seven important components.